Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Uh, uh. What is up, guys? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, America's favorite one-legged piece of shit. I'm Derek Whitea. Check it out. Savage Saturday is a new weekly show coming to you on the Drinking Bros podcast. Um, what is it? What? What? You know what? Um, so it's. We're do- First off, we're doing this shit live, and I stutter my words. I think out loud a lot. I talk to myself. Sometimes I'll just laugh at my own fucking jokes, okay? Um, and we're doing this in my garage. This is my house. This is my garage. I live by an Air Force base. We might have to take an airplane timeout um, once or twice during a show. That's not my fault. I can't control it. Uh, but anyways, what, what um, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to start this weekly show. Um, you know, Ross and Dan, I've, I've been friends with Ross for like five, six years now or something like that. And Dan, actually Dan, uh, who you guys know from the, the regular Drinking Bros podcast, Dan and I were in the Army together. And uh, they were in Vegas a couple weeks ago, and they said, Derek, do you have any interest in, uh, in doing a weekly show with us? And I was like, fuck yeah, man. But that's all I can do. I can't commit to like... Doing a you know podcast. I love podcasts. I love doing podcasts. I like getting to sit down and talking with uh, Ross and uh, Dan. But I can't commit to doing a podcast like they do. Holy moly, they do a show a day or something like that. Um, I'm good for once a week. I'm good for once a week. So Ross said, "How about you do a show on Saturdays? We'll call it Savage Saturdays." I was like, "Fuck yeah, man!" So what what it, um, what is this show? This is so I'm Derek. My I'm, my name's Derek Whiteh. Um, I'm a fitness guy. I love, I love fitness. I, I, I work out for a living. I help people with fitness for a living. So on Saturdays, Savage Saturdays, we're going to talk about health and fitness. It's kind of my goal to, you know, if, if, you know, fitness is my life. And actually episode one here, we're just going to talk about my life story and fitness. Like it's, we're just going to start at the beginning until now. And that's what this episode is about. I'm going to give you my background in fitness and, and fitness is my life. You know, because my life has taken some weird turns and fitness doesn't have to be your life, but I believe that fitness should be a part of your life. And so if you're working out now, great. We're going to sit here and talk shit, have a good time. And if you're not exercising or eating right or something like that, it's kind of my fucking goal with this show to convince you that you should fucking take care of yourself. Um, because, you know, being, being a little bit healthier and fit makes um, life a little bit better, you know, for a lot of reasons. And we'll talk about all that. So that's my, that's my goal. That's my mission for the show. Well, I got a couple. I, I, I want to laugh. I want to fucking talk shit and laugh. Uh, I want you, if I can make, uh, you know, during, during, when I do these shows, if I can make somebody out there fucking believe in themselves a little bit more and start trying and start taking care of themselves, fucking great. That's a win. Um, mm. Also, Saturdays, I don't do podcasts over. I just don't do podcasts over. So as we, as we go on, I'm going to continue to get drunker and drunker. Started my Saturday. So like today, today I woke up early about six o'clock. I went and got my training in because I'm in a training cycle right now. Got my workout in, uh, came home. We started setting up and I've been drinking. Um, so Saturdays, you know, when I drink, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to eat. It takes away from my drunk, which is da- It's a dangerous game to play, but I've, I've mastered the art of the blackout. I really have. Like, I know me. I know my body. When I'm out at night, I know when to put my sunglasses on so people don't know how fucked up I am. And I know how to get back to uh, my my room or my house or my hotel in time to uh, pass out and not make a scene in public. Anyways, episode one of Savage Saturdays. My idea was to just give you a background of, of or my background with fitness because it kind of makes sense. We're starting a new show. Um, some of you may know me. Um, some of you may not know me. Some of you may like me. Some of you may not like me, and if you know me and you don't like me, like, we're cool. It's cool. I fucking don't like me most of the time either. Like, it is cool. Like, I guess maybe that's one of my other goals for this show is if you know me and you don't like me, maybe I'll, like, help you get to know me a little better. Because, like, I get it, man. I'm I'm not good at I'm, – I'm horrible at first impressions because I'm just right out there, you know, because I'll meet somebody like, hi, Derek, what's your name? She's like, Amy. I'm like, oh, Amy, like, that's your fucking hairstyle? She's like, man, and you know, I just like, I just, I like, so if you don't like me, it's cool. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to win your heart. Okay. Um, and I've been on the drinking bros podcast before and I've, you know, I've had a, I love the opportunity to sit down. I love getting interviewed by Ross. Ross is just a good interviewer and I like, I'll go on other podcasts sometimes in the past. 
uh, and people will interview me and it's just like, I'm just like, you're not Ross. You are not like Ross just knows how to get your feelings out of you, you know, like he, um, and so, so I've been on the Drinking Bros podcast before, a couple interviews with Ross. So a lot of you guys, or, maybe, or you know, some of you may know um, some of my story, but mostly about the army and stuff like that. But, but here we're talking about fitness. And so that's what episode one is here right now. I'm taking you, my fitness over the last 17 years, um, and it starts uh, where every story starts, in high school, you know, because that's when life begins, right? In fucking high school, essentially, I guess, you know, before that. So I grew up in uh, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, and I played seasonal sports, you know, and I played, you know, soccer, baseball, football, did hockey, did basketball, did everything. I was, I was you know, an athletic kid growing up um, through ninth grade, but um, I, was, I was kind of a chubby kid. Um, I grew up with parents who didn't really know too much about food and health and fitness and things like that. They were like, they were great parents. They loved me. They took care of me, but they didn't themselves have an education in nutrition and things like that. And so we had a lot of like, so I was drinking pop and eating chips and, and fake food from the frozen food section. And part of that was we grew up, you know, relatively fucking poor, um, but, uh, you know, my mom, my, my dad really never tried at all. And then my mom, I remember she like sometimes she would do her Denise Austin workouts in the morning and she would go through her kicks where she counted calories. And she was kind of like your typical case of crash diet, lose weight, but then get fat again type stuff. But overall, I didn't, I didn't personally have any kind of education growing up about health and, and nutrition and fitness and stuff like that. And uh, when I was in high school... Uh, my high school years were funny. I was I was me in high school with you know I didn't really go to school too much and um, I uh, I uh, <laughs> smoked a lot and I drank a lot. I did I ditched school to to smoke and drink and stuff like that. And I learned I was playing the guitar with a buddy and things. And uh, but the, the the tricky thing about me was is like I had a girlfriend. I had a high school sweetheart. I dated a girl for like two two and a half years or something like that. And uh, so I was me. I was this like chubby, nerdy stoner and stuff. But my girlfriend was easily the fucking hottest girl in school. And she was the captain of the cheerleading squad and stuff like that. And I'm friends with the guys now today. And, and I don't want to say they like bullied me or picked on me because they didn't. Like people liked me. I made them laugh and stuff. But they definitely like pushed my fucking buttons. You know, like the jocks wanted to fuck my girlfriend and... And, 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 and stuff like that. So they fucked with me and I was kind of, I was just a pussy. I was a chubby little pussy and I never stood up for myself, you know? So like it was well known at school that me and my girlfriend sat together, but like I would get up to throw something away and by the time I came back, somebody would be sitting in my spot just to fuck with me and I would just sit there and eat it, you know? So I was like, man, fuck this shit. Being a pussy sucks, you know? Mm. But um, anyways, long story short, when we broke up, uh, and I, I promise this is where my fitness story starts. It is this fucking <laughs> pathetic. Yeah, yeah. When we broke up, I had this. Um, it, I remember this day. There was a. Uh, I was at a. I went to a movie, and I was like, I was like, hey, we're go like me and my family. We're going to a movie. You want to come to a movie? She's like, no. I was like, all right, fine. Shit, fuck. You don't want. You, you know. Um, so we were at the movie theater, and then somebody, one of my friends, worked there, and he was like, hey, your girlfriend's here with some other dude. I'm like, god damn it, you know. And so I went into there, the movie they were at. And I was like, what are you doing? And she was like, well, it is what it is, you know? And so I walked out of that motherfucker. I walked out of the, I stormed out of the theater and I was crying. And I fucking just left and I just like walked into the woods, which was really weird, you know? But I was a fucking sad emo teen. And I remember I laid down in the woods. I was just fucking crying my eyes out because I was a sad kid. Fucking nothing hurts like heartache, man, especially in those years. Um... And I was crying and I had my little, um, I called my mom on my cell phone in what, 2003. So I had like the Nokia gold cell phone. You remember that shit? Yeah. So I, and I, you know, I, I remember this is, I, I vividly remember this. I was laying down in the woods and I was looking up and the moon was, you know, up in the sky and I could see the trees and I called my mom and I was crying and she's like, what's wrong, Derek? I was like, mom, I just want to fucking die. You know, I, and I said that, that was the first time I said that to my mom. I've said it to her a lot of times since, you know, but uh, that was the first time I said to my mom, like, mom, I just want to fucking die. Like, I don't, this, this hurts too much. I want to fucking die, you know? And so she's like, where are you? And I was like, I'm in the fucking woods, mom. And I want to die. Um, but I, you know, so, um, 
I told her where I was and stuff like that, and they came and got me. And uh, my parents took me to a psychologist. So that was the first time I went to a psychologist. My dad was a, an electrician. Uh, he, they, and they get, in the union, they got their fucking, you know. So they took me to a psychologist, and this guy was like, tell me your problems. And I was like, I'm sad, dude, you know. Um, and this guy says to me, he's like, you got a lot of emotions, kid. I'm like, I do, sir, you know. And he's like, have you ever thought about exercising? I was like, no. He's like, fuck no. He was like, you should, you should start working out. And, and in my head, I was like, you get paid to give this kind of stupid ass fucking advice, you know? Yeah. But, you know, so I sat down with the, the psychologist for a while and his, the take home from that was he told me that I should start, I should start exercising. So I was 17 years old. I think it was like about halfway through my junior year of high school. I was like, all right, I'll start exercising. So I stopped drinking, stopped smoking, and I started exercising. And I didn't know fuck all about, like, I grew up playing sports, but fucking fit, fitness and exercising is a different thing. So, you know, um, one of the things I started doing was was running. I started running. And where I grew up, there was this, uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota, there was a lake. It was Lake Phelan. And it was three miles around Lake Phelan. And uh, so I started running. And at first, the, my first time running around the lake, I could run a little bit, but then I like, had to hold my side and I had to walk and stuff like that. And, you know, I just kept running that lake and my goal was to run around it, which is funny because like nowadays people ask me, they're like, hey man, how do you help me with running? I was like, I don't, I'm not going to give you a fucking run 400 meters today, run 800 meters tomorrow at this pace. It's like, if you want to get better at running, you get out there and you fucking suck and you hurt until it doesn't hurt as much anymore, you know, that's how I, so like, you know, I started running this lake and then I would start running to, to the uh, Maplewood Community Center and dude, it's so funny, like my early workout days because, oh man, you know, like the, the trash bag sweatsuits and things like that, like I would wear that stuff and go to Target, but like ankle weights, fuck yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Wait, if I fucking buy this parachute and I try to run with it, it'll make me more in shape, fuck yeah. So like the funny thing about me and fitness is like I instruct, like I give people fitness advice nowadays and, and a lot of it is let me fucking help you avoid the dumb shit that I did from the time that I was 17 till I was about 28, all right? Like there was a good 11 year period where I did a lot of dumb shit. So anyway, I started working out in high school and um, you know, I was still, I still didn't, um, I was still ditching school, but instead of like drinking and smoking, I was going to the gym. And I hired a personal trainer and I started working out. We were doing weird shit like plyometrics and stuff back in the day and lifting and things like that. And so um, it, was, it was my senior year of high school and I've been, I've been working out. Actually, I was 17 years old. I've been working out for a while. And it was fitness that drove me to the army, not the army that drove me to fitness. You know, so some people ask me nowadays are like, you know, did being in the army change? who Are you who you are now because of what happened and things like that? I was like... I think I was on this path before. It was it was fitness that drove me to the army. Um, and so, you know, um, I joined the army when I was 17 years old. I did that delayed entry program thing. Dude, like, here's how fucking sad and pathetic. I, I was that fucking kid who gave himself a high and tight the day he signed the papers to join the army, you know? And uh, uh, my senior year of high school, it was just known that I was going to the army. I didn't go to school much. I was just working out all the time. And it, uh, it paid off, man, because like basic training and airborne school, all that running stuff. I've only, in the military, I only didn't score a 300 one time, you know? And I was like, oof, that's awful. And so when we would get, when we would, and if you were with me, if your PT score wasn't 300, it like I fucking I hated you. I thought you were kind of a bitch and things like that. So that's my. If you guys are listening and you're in the military, my standard is a 300. I think a 300 personally for me a 300 is the minimum because it's it's such an easy test and it's changed now. You know they do. I don't know what this new army PT test stuff is. It's like it's but it's stupid because like they're like oh you got to do a deadlift but it's not a deadlift. It's a it's a fucking deadlift in a trap bar. And I just, it hurts me. I love the old school test. I love the old school test. Two minutes of push-ups, two minutes of sit-ups, two fucking mile run. But it was actually like the, 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 the test for PRC at Fort Bragg. That was a good test because it was that. But the, the run was a five mile run in the sand, you know. And then you had to go right to a swim test. Like that's a cool, that's a good test of fitness right there, you know. So, mm. but anyways, like so for me. 
I trained up. I trained up. By the time I got to basic training, I was in really good fucking shape. And then I'll tell you, um, in basic training, I actually got out of shape. Dude, I was stress eating in basic training. You know, like, um, so uh, when you went through, did you guys, did you guys have like uh, every like week or every two weeks or so, like a pizza guy would come and you could buy power bars and shit like that? Dude, yeah, like we, you could buy power bars or something like that. Or when we would go on fucking, so here's, here's, here's the thing about me and basic training. In the, it was 14 weeks, right? In week five, my bunk mate went AWOL. And so he was just gone. And so like I would sleep on his fucking cot. And so my bed was always made. And then his locker, I stored contraband. And I was like the fucking drug dealer of our basic training platoon. And so I was like fucking slinging power bars. And on, on family weekend, I went to the vitamin shop and I bought a whole bunch of supplements. And so I was selling supplements out of my fucking dude. And I was like, every time we did inspections, I was like, oh, fuck. Dude, I got a lot of shit. I've always been a fucking liar and a troublemaker. And dude, you know, like, you know what's funny is like people these like it's 2020 and everybody's like, I'm a hustler. I'm like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Really? I've been like, I've been stealing since I was in my teens. All right, like I've been, I've been, I've been turning them my own buck. How old were you when you got your first job? Me, uh, 15. Really? Yeah. yeah. Dude, I. It's like, you know, it's funny. I'm not a, hard, I don't consider myself a hard worker or something like that, but I've been working in like sixth grade. I teamed up with my buddy on a paper route and then like junior high, I would walk like such a stupid story, but I would walk two miles to the golf course and caddy yeah. on Saturdays and Sundays. That's a job to make, but you're making like about like 50 to $80 a day. So like a fucking 12 year old kid with his own 180, dude, I had every fucking cool ass new Nintendo 64 controller there was. I had the see-through one that vibrated and stuff like that. That's good money. I yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did that till I got a, I got a, I got a real job. But like, anyway, like I've been making a buck and that's kind of, I did that in basic training and then I did that in Iraq too. I was selling some shit in Iraq to guys. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways, you got to know how to make a dollar in the world, but it's funny because I don't think of myself as a, as a worker or something like that, but it's just, um, but anyways, yeah, basic train and I actually, but so I had this stockpile of power bars and stuff like that and I was just like stress eating because, and I, would, I actually got fat. I actually got fat and I, I still did great. Like my PT was fucking phenomenal, uh, but I went to airborne school and in airborne school, it got worse. Like I was, and so you're bald and you're clean shaven and my face was just chubby and I was 18 years old, 19 at the time and I'm fucking German, Minnesotan. So we, we can carry fat. I was baby fat, even though I had been working out for two years already, it was like baby fat, you know? And uh, in airborne school, you get your weekends off or something like that or a Sunday off and you can like roam around post or something like that. So I would just do it like, go, I would go by fucking cookies and, and all that, you know, all that shit. And I did that when I was like learning, you know, and, and when I was learning fitness, I started working out and I would like crash diet, crash diet, crash diet. But then boom, binge. Yep. I've always, I've, I've up until five years ago, I've always been like, I'm going to be super clean, super healthy. I'm going to be super clean, super healthy. But then it's just like, boom, you binge and you eat. And so in airborne school, I got fucking skinny fat again too. And I'll tell you what, man, um, one of the, like I graduated and, uh, one of the, one of the black hats, when I, when I went to go pick up, when I went to their office to pick up my certificate of graduation, I had a fucking black hat. Look, look me in the fucking eyes. And he was like, Hey, you look like that guy. Don't be that fucking guy. And what he was telling me, was like, you look like a fucking bitch, dude. Like, that's what he was saying. He was like, you look like a pussy ass fucking bitch. And I was like, this is just, you just like fucking, and like times like that, when people say shit to you, that'll make you or fucking break you. That guy said, you are a fucking pussy right now. Step the fuck up. Cause like, you know, like guys like that, they've already been in the army and they know what kind of turd bags come in. And so like that guy looked at me and I was super, I was super motivated. I was, I was fucking happy to be there. I was super motivated, but it's just like, dude, you like stress is a weird thing. And you just like stress eat when food becomes your fucking comfort, you know, like when you don't know how to process or handle emotions. And so you turn to a pack of Oreos or something like that. That's a fucking real thing, but that takes education and knowledge. Cause that's what I knew growing up. You know, I was only behaving like I had learned, but that guy looked me in the eyes and he said, you look like that guy. 
don't be that fucking guy. And I was like, oh, shit. So it took me a few years to change my ways, but like, you know, like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. So I, you know, I, I showed up at my unit and, 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 you know, I, I got attached or I got assigned to the A second airborne division there. And, you know, like we're, I'm not here to like talk about my army shit or like deployments and war stories and stuff like that. I'll just say like, you know, when I was, when I was in the army, like, if we weren't in the field or when we were off work, so in the army, dude, I fucking love that shit because you wake up and you got to do PT. PT was at like what? From 6.30 to 8 and then the work day started at 9. But like for me, I would get up before PT. God bless you. I would go to the gym. I would go to the gym and hit a circuit workout and then I would come back and I'd show up at my unit. I'd do PT there because to me, running was easy. And then after the work day, if we were in garrison and not in the field or something like that, I would, I would either run. I was probably running like 8 to 12 miles a day when I was – I fucking loved running, man. And my fucking uh, – my best two-mile time in the Army was 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah, dude. And I, Yeah, and I did a 10-miler in like 62 minutes. So that's basically holding just over a a six-minute pace or so. I fucking loved running. Like as much as I lift now, I always lifted back then, and my numbers were solid. Like when I got shot, I was, you know, I was benching 325, squatting uh, 475, and I was pulling – my deadlift was like 525. But I was fuck. I fucking loved running, dude. Running was my goddamn jam. And back then, you had to run with your fucking CD player, and that motherfucker would skip and stuff like that. So I was running through Area J at Fort Bragg there, um, just all over that motherfucker. And I took pride. I was always the fastest dude in my unit. But there was one guy who showed up, and he was faster than me. I was like, what the fuck? And he was 35 years old. This guy, this oh man, his name was Delaney. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to say a couple true things. But so so we had this guy show up. So I was the runner in our fucking unit there, you know. But Delaney showed up and he was 35 years old. And he was a fucking, he was an English teacher back in his town. But for some reason or another, he joined the army, you know. And this guy, he just, he just didn't understand soldier things. But that motherfucker could run. Like when we did EIB, he double no-goed his first lane. It was the nine mil, like, you know, like, assembled, yeah, yeah, I was just like, but, but we went out, but he, he, we went out in area J for a run one time and nobody, nobody was fucking faster than me. And I took pride in that, you know, but this guy, we went out for a run and it was, and it wasn't like, Hey, we're going to sit and fucking talk to each other or something like that. Like we're here to run. He ran at his pace. I ran at my pace, but he fucking went so dude, like no shit. I got lost. Because he fucking ran so fast, I couldn't see him anymore. And then I just got lost out in Area J at Fort Bragg, which, like, maybe some... It's just, it's just like, sand trails and in the woods and stuff. And I, and there was this point, I couldn't see this guy anymore. I was like, fuck. So I looked at, you know, I had to find the water tower. And I just ran back to the water tower. So anyways, you know, um, that, was, that was my thing. Like, uh, like, off duty, I was working out. When I was in the Army, it's like we had our work day. And then other than that... My job for me was to be the most physically fit motherfucker because like, oh, actually just today I talked to a guy. He's like, he's like, how do you help? He's like, I need motivation. I was like, you bitch, you're in the fucking military. There is no better fucking motivation than being in the military. That job gave you. So I was an infantryman, you know, and like that job gave you motivation because you were literally training to fucking kill somebody. And if you fucking slacked on your training, they were going to kill you or worse one of your friends, you know, like, so being in the army was the shit It fucking, I loved working out and, 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 and that just gave you the, that kind of motivation. Like there's no more pure, you can't fabricate that shit when you're training to kill. It's a beautiful thing. And so, and I, I always had a high standard for, uh, people. Um, when I was a team leader and stuff, I had a high standard of fitness for uh my subordinates and then when i had leaders in the army that were fat i just didn't respect them at all and i still don't and they you know i just i still don't i just i can't i love i love everybody but if you're in the military or a cop or a firefighter or an emt if you're in a fucking career field like in my opinion like we will get along we can, we'll be friends we can have beers and laugh but if you're in a fucking career field where people depend on you to be physically fit and you're not like honestly like just like fix your fucking shit 
fix your shit. I'm not going to say anything mean. I'm just going to say fix your shit. You know, because it's not okay. It's not okay. And there's no, there's a difference between the way I talk to people in that community and civilians. With civilians, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Like, we'll, we'll take it slow and stuff like that. If a civilian writes me, they're like, hey, I'm struggling with motivation. And, uh, you know, I just, but I, but I want to be better. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. Let's take it slow. But if a, if, a, if a cop writes me and they're like, hey, man, I'm fucking fat and out of shape and I don't have motivation. I'm like, get your fucking shit together. Get your fucking shit together. You're in, you're in a, you're like, just like, I come from the old army. I was like, you're in a man's world. You're a man in a man's world. Be a fucking man. All right. So, and it, like, so I had a high standard of fitness when I was in the army is the point of this story. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so just, uh, I, I got, you know, even in Iraq, I was working out. And so on the deployment, you know, I, we got deployed in January, 2007 there, the deployment that I got shot on was, we took over this abandoned, uh, shopping mall. We called the cop Callahan and it, it, in there, I, um, for a little while, I was the only dude with any weights or something like that. I, I had a dumbbell. Here's a good, here's a good little fucking story. Like, you know how fucking in Iraq, all their shitters are on the fucking floor there. We were, we were doing our patrols or whatever the fuck. And there was a dumbbell. It was a nasty fucking dumbbell. And somebody used it as like a toilet seat. And I just fucking took it. So I took somebody's, but it, like, we didn't have dumbbells. We didn't have things to so like rest their ass cheek on while they were shitting. No, I think they just covered their poop hole with this oh. dumbbell. And so I was like, I'll take it. So it was like a 20 pound dumbbell. <laughs> yeah. And there was this, I can't remember for the life of me what this road was called, but there was a road on our cop and, and, it, and it was like a fucking mile and a half long and it came to a T intersection and right there at the end, there was a gym. We were like, what the fuck? There's a gym? And so I fucking, um, on one of the refits, I got a bunch of cash and then we went on patrol of this gym. I was like, hey, I want to buy some weights. And they were like, Mr. Mr. No, 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 no. They thought I wanted to like, they thought I was there to steal their shit. I was like, no, dude, fucking I got money, dog. And so I bought a barbell and two 45 pound plates from these guys. And so for a little while, I like, we, we had these, we had these weights and, and like the nice thing was, is I had some weights to work out with. The bad thing was, is they were right next to my cot. And so I'd be trying to sleep or something like that. And the dudes would come use it and stuff. And all of a sudden you just, hear like, Real, like, that'll get me, like real quick fitness tip, man. If you're like, when you're working out, you're going to make some noise, right? If you're doing this, psst, psst, do this instead. Hup, hup, hup. I'm, I'm big in grunting <laughs> when I work out. Um, people kind of make fun of me for my noises, but they're burly ass, manly fucking noises, you know? So anyways, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I was, you know, on that, uh, when on the deployment I got shot on, we were running like 12 hours of patrols and missions a day and stuff like that, but I was still working out. I went over there with like a jump rope and we eventually got a gym. So we lived in this building and it was four stories and it was out in the middle of the city, you know, and, and, um, there was always mortar attacks happening, like direct fucking mortar attacks and stuff like that. Um, but on the fourth floor for a while, it was just empty. And so I would go upstairs and I would jump rope and I had, then like there was a wall ball and I would, but I would run like suicide sprints up there and stuff like that. Like every morning, if we weren't doing a mission, I would go up there every morning and like, I'll tell you, like, it's crazy. One morning, I don't believe in stuff. I don't believe that things happen for a reason. I don't believe in things. But there were two things that happened on this deployment that make me fucking like, man, what? So here's one of them. And I'll tell you the other one just because. But here's one of them. So, like, one morning, I was going to go upstairs and run my sprints and do my jump rope and get my cardio in for the day. Um, and I was, like, fucking geared up. I was ready to go upstairs and work out. But I was just like, man, I'm fucking behind on my correspondence like I, I I owe some people letters you know so I sat down to write my aunt um, my, my uncle Don and my aunt Kathy I sat down to write them a letter and uh, I was I like vividly remember this I was on the third fucking line of that letter and all of a sudden it was like Gadoosh! a fucking direct attack on our cop like 11 rockets hit the building it was fucking huge man it was huge and and um uh, a couple of people got wounded and injured and things like that, you know. But the thing is, is like that fourth floor was fucking like just peppered. And so like, could I, well, like would have, would something have happened to me? 
Maybe, but like definitely there was a good chance if you were on that fourth floor because it was just empty. Nobody was up there, you know, and you go up there and there's just like fucking parts of the wall everywhere and stuff like that. So I was like, fuck, I was going to be up there working out right now, you know. And so like once we did all our shit, I came back to that letter. I was like, I think you guys just saved my fucking life, you know, I was like, what the fuck, you know. But so I was working out even in Iraq and stuff like that, you know, Um and uh, we'll get back to fitness, but do you want to hear the other story of, yeah. so, dude, I am not, a, like, again, I'm not a dude who believes things happen for a reason. It's like, I'm cool with people who believe in whatever they want to believe. For me personally, I'm an atheist, but I shut the fuck up about it, you know? <laughs> like, uh, I, I, I had two things, you know, back in the day we had the breast pockets there, you know? And so I had one coin in this breast pocket and one coin in this breast pocket. Uh, the coin in this breast pocket was a little pendant my mom gave me and said, hope. I have hope tattooed in my lip. Do you know that? Yeah. And you like it. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a pendant from my mom that said hope. A little like fucking, you know. And then my grandma gave me a coin and it was the saint of travelers or something like that. I can't remember. I think, yeah, St. Christopher. Like, I still have it. I just can't remember, you know? So I wore those. I wore those. I wore those in my breast pockets every fucking day on every fucking mission, you know? So the mission I got shot on, we were actually scheduled to go on a refit that night. So all my shit was packed. All my shit was packed for refit. And at last minute, we got the call. We're like, hey, you got to fucking go out and do fucking bang bang shit tonight. I was like... Usually I'd be down with that, but I was like, I need a fucking break, man. Like, I'm just, <laughs> like, can I can I get some hot chow? Can, can I get some fucking Salisbury steak in this motherfucker? You know. So, anyways, I, my shit was packed up. Those pendants were packed up in my assault pack, and I went out on those. I went out on that night of missions without those things in my fucking breast pockets. And That's why you got shot. I know, but like, I can't. I can't believe that. But. It's right there in front of me, you know, like, yeah, 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 I didn't get shot because of the surge or like strategies in Iraq or something like that. The only reason I got shot is because I wasn't wearing those fucking pendants. Yeah, maybe, possibly, who knows? Yeah. Mm. But anyways, yeah, I got shot. And here's like, dude, like, if you want to know how, like, how big a part of my life fitness is, like, I got shot and, uh. Um, in the hospital, I wasn't even, I couldn't, I, I was, I was non-weight bearing for about six months, I think. Like, you know, some, some of these, like, so this, the period of my life from like 2007 to 2010 or so, I was on so many painkillers and drugs. And then when I got retired, I was drunk so much. Like my memories, I can't trust them. So like in this, if, if I say something, I'm at least like, 60% sure that I'm right. You can't, and even if you're sober, you can't trust your fucking memories, you know? But um, at the hospital there, I was just like, I had I had a leg that didn't bend. I had an external fixator, you know, where you got all them bars and shit fucking sticking out of your leg in a wheelchair. But I would go to the physical therapy area and just lift weights. And I would, I had some dumbbells in my fucking room and I would be like, mom, take me outside. I need to go get my workout in today. Like I literally have to fucking work out every fucking day. I just like in the hospital at Walter Reed inpatient, but I'd have my mom wheel me out to the courtyard because I had to get my fucking training in for that day. And especially, so after I got, you know, I got shot in June of 2007, shot through the knee. Yeah, I got shot through the knee on a house raid in June 2007. For those of you who have never heard before, um, and uh, I was laid up in the hospital at Walter Reed for six months. But it's like for me, I work out every day. That's who I am. And especially at that time, like even though I had been shot and the um, prognosis wasn't good, I was living my life as if the harder I pushed myself, the better I did, the more likely I, my chances were of returning to my unit. That's all I wanted to do at that time is like fix this fucking shit fix this fucking knee. Let's get, let's get back to the unit. So I had to go do my fucking training. And so I'm on, you know, dilated drips and fucking, uh, I don't like, I, my pain was through the roof, man. And I guess doctors say like knee pain is some of the nastiest shit you can handle. I was on every drug. I was on so many drugs and they still couldn't control my pain. Maybe I'm a pussy, but maybe getting shot in the knee just fucking hurts. Um, I was on a ketamine drip for 72 hours. 
And that was, that was kind of cool. You know, like if you can ever get on a ketamine drip, definitely do that. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. it's special K is like the street name for the drug, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, even I was, I was, I was working out in the, in the hospital there and, and, uh, there's, there's some pictures, you know, they, they got the walking bar in the physical therapy rooms, the walking bars, but I was like, I can do dips there. And so there's pictures of me doing dips. Like just, dude, I'm a fucking, I'm that fucking weird. I'm not the weirdo. I saw a funny video. There's this, uh, there's a Instagram page. It's called like shaming passengers or something. And so people take pictures and videos of shitty fucking passengers on airplanes. And one dude was standing up in the aisle way, like lifting with bands he had a band and he was like doing he was doing bicep curls i'm not that fucking guy all right when i'm on a plane i fucking shut the fuck up and i stick to myself you know but um uh but when i was in the hospital there i just i wanted to get back to my unit so i was working out and whatnot and i was um and uh actually so i guess we have to get into a little a little bit about getting shot is you know they couldn't fix i took a bullet side to side through the knee and the only reason they kept my leg is because my ankle worked, you know? And I think, you know, like we had a, me and the doctors had a, we had different, different opinions back then. The doctors wanted what was best for me personally in my life. And what I wanted was to get back to my fucking job. Cause you know, so they couldn't fix my knee. They couldn't get it to bend. I was like, Hey, that's fine. Cut it off. You know? Cause I was seeing at Walter Reed there, I was seeing dudes walking around with prosthetics and stuff. I was like, Pfft. Give me one of those. I'll fucking do it, man. Like, and 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 here's the arrogance of. I don't know if it's arrogance. I told the doctors this. I had to fight. I had to fight with the doctors for a long time to get my fucking leg cut off. And I told them at Walter Reed. And I said, hey, because they were telling me like they gave me the prognosis of best case scenario, you'll be able to walk unassisted someday. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? They're like, you you'll walk without a cane. I was like, that's not good enough. That like I want to go back to like my unit I want to go back and fight the war and I still have goals and things like that and I'll tell you like and maybe we'll talk about this some other time but uh my my I always wanted to go the special forces route I wanted to be a motherfucking green beret I wanted to do that job I wanted to do big boy shit with big boys okay that was my fucking dream man and I told I told the doctors I was like hey I don't know if I'm gonna be that guy I don't know but I know that I got the fucking nuts to try. Someday, somebody is going to graduate selection with a fake leg. You know? I was like, I don't know if I'm that guy. And, like, my track record, I quit PRTC twice at Bragg. I had some, I had a lot of mental growing up to do when I was, or, you know, mental fucking maturing to do. When I was in the military, I quit some things for dumb fucking reasons. It was never physical stuff. But I, So I told the doctors, I was like, hey, I don't know if... I can be that guy, but I'm willing to try. If you give me the fucking tools, if you can get my body working, I'm willing to try. And uh, they, uh, anyways, <laughs> long, sto long story short of that, uh, it is such a weird story. Like, you know, I got, I got kicked out of the army against my wishes. It was such a shitty two years. It was like, I, I, I did, I did, I think I had like 30 some odd surgeries. They kept trying to save my leg. Like I was in Walter Reed for six months. But then they uh, they sent me to Minnesota to heal, and they I was in the Wounded Transition Brigade. And this is 2008, and it's like they were like, "Do this surgery." I was like, "Just cut my leg off," and they're like, "If you do this surgery and it fails, we'll talk about cutting your leg off." I was like, "Okay," so I did a surgery, and it didn't work. And I was like, "Can we cut my leg off now?" And they're like, "Well, do do this surgery, and we'll talk about cutting your leg off." I was like, "Okay, I'll do this surgery, but after that, can we just if it doesn't work, can we cut my leg off?" And I was like, "Dude, this was I was." putting everything I had into physical therapy and stuff like that. And dude, I would show up to physical therapy with a fucking washcloth because I had to bite down on it. So my thing is my leg wouldn't bend. And so my physical therapy is I would just sit at the edge of a table and they would push on my leg to get it to bend. And I'd be like, hey, I'm gonna scream and I'm gonna cry ignore me do what you have to do because i'm trying to fucking do some shit okay i'm trying to go back to war i really 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 fucking liked war okay <laughs> like this is like you have to send me to war i'm not a good civilian i got to, my psychologist when i was 17 told me i had a lot of feelings and i need to exercise them you know <laughs> yeah so so 
I would go to physical therapy and bite down on that towel and I would just like scream in pain and cry and stuff like that. And like if a family member or a girlfriend came with me, they're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is my physical therapy. It has to be done. Shut the fuck up. Don't tell them to stop. Don't tell them to ease back or something like that. So I was, I was, I, as far as I know, I was giving everything I had to recovering at the time. And, and it just didn't work out, you know? And then the motherfuckers, instead of cutting my leg off, they just kicked me out of the fucking army. And so, <laughs> so for two years, so we're in, in, in 2009, I got medically retired from the army there. And I think, uh, you know, it's so like right away, right away, I just started drinking. Like, I'm just, I'm in like real drinking, like a fucking 24 pack. I was drinking Bud Light back then, but then like a two liter bottle of Jack a day. I was drunk from sun up to sun down, driving around, things like that. But you know what's funny? I was still working out. I would. I, I remember one time I got released from jail, and I went right to the gym because I had, a, I had an appointment with a personal trainer. <laughs> I showed up in jeans and shit like that. Um, I ended up kind of sobering up for a little while, and I was going to college. But I, I had gotten two DUIs um, right after I got uh, medically retired from the army. Like, I'm not proud of that, but it is what it is. I was living like shit at the time. I was just drinking and wanted to fucking die. So I got two DUIs. So I had a revoked license and I was in college for a while and I would, I would, I would get up early before school and I would walk, I would walk to the, I lived about a mile away from the college I went to. So I would, and they had a gym. I couldn't drive to the gym cause I didn't have a fucking car, you know? So I would walk to school Dude, it's like, you know, I'd walk to school, I'd hit my cardio, I'd go to my classes, I'd come home, have some lunch, go back to school, and work out. Like, I can't fucking stress enough. Like, looking back, I don't think about my fucking history and stuff like that, but, like, looking back, like, fitness has always been, like, the main thing. I don't, it's some, for some reason, it's how I define myself. And sometimes I wonder if it's healthy or unhealthy, but then I'm like, shut the fuck up, Derek, because, like, you know what? You know what I learned? The meaning to life is the meaning of life is never asking yourself what is the meaning of life. It's just living it. You know, like this is who I am. I fucking love to work out. You know, <laughs> like um, so those were those days. Like 2009 to 2011 were, were tough years. But uh, like even in my tough times, like people are like, "Hey, man, I'm really depressed. I haven't worked out." Like we're not relatable. I work out through everything. I always. Always, always, I think my depression comes from things outside of me. And sometimes I get sad and overwhelmed because of like, I get, dude, like I have to shut my brain off to the world outside of me because cruelty makes me sad. You know? <laughs> like that's what gets me depressed. My, my life, my ways don't make me sad. It's just the outside world, how people are mean to each other. That fucking, that's what makes me depressed is that I have to live in a world where I'm just like, well, why are people so mean to each other all the time? Like, don't get me wrong. I'll kill a motherfucker and asshole, you know, but, you know, but, but good people deserve to be treated nicely. God damn it. You know, but like even, even, even in my worst years, my, like my most depressed years where all I wanted to do was die. I still worked out because I've always fucking fought. I think that's a difference between, you know, like I don't, I don't want to say there's a difference between me and the people I help, but there has to be, right? Because that's why they ask me for fucking help, you know? So like the difference, maybe the difference between me and somebody else is like, that has been my constant. And I kind of say that now, you know, like if, 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 you know, you know, sometimes you get stuck in a hole or something like that, but if you build a foundation and for me, fitness is a foundation, you know? So it's like, so it's like, I always, here's, here's working out. I always work out. I take care of myself. I, I eat good and I exercise and then, okay, here's my, um, relationships with friends and family. Here's my career. Here's my relationships with a loved one or something like that. I can lose all of these things. I can lose, you know, like break up or get divorced. I can fucking lose my job. I can have shitty relationships with my family, but as long as I'm taking care of me, I can't go lower. Right? Like that's a fucking huge deal. You know, it's like, as long as you're taking care of yourself and even in like in those bad times, if there's ever a time to really give a shit about yourself, it's when you're at your lowest, <laughs> you know, because people are like, Oh man, I fucking, you know, like money's tight. 
My, my, my marriage isn't going so great. And on top of that, I'm eating fast food every day. I'm not exercising. I'm fucking getting fat. And so like, that's just compounding on the fucking problems, you know? So <laughs> even in those years I was exercising. Um, and then, and then like, we'll just, you know, I got my leg cut off finally, uh, in 2011 there. And it was a beautiful fucking thing, man. It was like, I was finally back in control for like, so for someone like me, like people look at me now, like I'm disabled now for sure. You know, like this is fucking hard, but at least I'm in control. Like there's things we can do and stuff like that. But my leg, when they kicked me out of the army, my leg didn't bend. It didn't fucking bend and it hurt hurt like a motherfucker and so there was a lot of things I couldn't do like literally there was a lot of things I couldn't do and I didn't have control over that so now if there's something that I can't do I can at least try to figure out how there's options you know it's like am I willing to put in the fucking time and work and effort to to learning how to do something new like we've learned how to do lunges we've learned how to squat without a box like all this all this like really cool ass shit that I'm able to do it started just, you know, it's like options. I didn't have options before. Fuck that. Fuck that life. No wonder I wanted to fucking die. You know, <laughs> like everybody wants to be in control of their lives, you know? Mm. So, you know, December, December 6, 2011, I got my leg cut off. And ever since then, and I've said this a million times like this, and it's, and, but it's true. And I remind myself of it because um, I'm back in control. So now my success is dependent on how hard I'm willing to push myself physically and mentally. There's a lot of fucking amputees. A majority of amputees are just, dude, like, they're, like, I'm not, like, this is Savage Saturday. They're lazy, whiny pieces of shit. They're like, I'm a fucking amputee. I can't do that. Like, you can. You you just won't. You know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> you can. But, it, but being an amputee sucks, dude. It fucking, it's a life of pain. And constant uncomfort, but it's a life. So why not try to fucking be fucking awesome? <laughs> like, like, or why, or like, or like awesome in your own eyes. Why live a fucking boring, regular fucking life? Why not try to go do some cool ass shit, whatever that means, you know? For me personally, like, I work out, I compete in powerlifting or CrossFit or something like that, but I have friends who like fucking climb mountains with prosthetic limbs or, or whatever they want to do but like for every person like me there's a hundred amputees that just don't do shit you know and that's but that's you can't blame them for it because it's a hard existence but like what, what I guess um you know if you look back on my life and things like that I, I guess that's always me like I've just always 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 wanted to push the boundaries. I've always wanted to push myself. That's what they teach you in the army too. You know, like fucking push yourself to the motherfucking max. Win. Yeah, yeah. So like win. Yeah, win. win, win. That's something I learned last year for the first time. You know what I thought of the other day? There's a big tip. There's a big difference between wanting to not lose and wanting to win. Huge. You're like, but I just learned that. I was like, oh fuck. So like for me, like, and so... You know, um, defensive versus offensive. Mm -hmm. Thinking over the years, you know, like 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 like, it's like it is true. I'm I'm not I'm a I'm a very like humble person, but it is true. Like my accomplishments are good. They're they're good. You know, like my accomplishments from from like over the course of my life, they're good. But I never look back and like, oh yeah, fuck you, I'm the shit. You know, like, but they're good. But I've never like. But, I, but everything I did, I didn't start believing in myself until last year. And it was having kids that changed me. Up until last year, I, I did everything I did with like just, just being depressed. Like a lifetime of fucking depression, you know? And now having kids, like I still have that voice in my head. But I'm like, shut the fuck up. We don't have time for that. I got kids. And I don't want them to be like me and stuff like that. But... You know, for my, my life, I, I always just, I was just scared. I was, I was always working out because I was fucking scared because, because like people, I don't want, you know, it just, it's just the fear of you're not pushing yourself hard enough. You're not doing enough. You can do so much more. All that negative self-talk and shit like that, that was me for fucking 15 years. 
and I, I just did it despite. And that was kind of my message for the world. It was, and it was like, that was, that was my message to the world for, you know, cause I've been doing things on the internet for five years now or so. And I was telling people, I was like, Hey, you know, you know, you have this negative voice in your head that tells you that you're, you know, that you fucking suck and go out there and do shit just despite that. But now I have a voice in my head that's like, win, just go fucking win. Just win. It's okay to win. And it's kind of weird because it's like the voice in my head, I like, I don't want to blame anything or anyone or something like that, but I didn't grow up with a winning mentality. You know, it was kind of like frowned upon in my house. It was, it was, the message was never, hey, like, you can do anything you want. The message was, no matter what you think you are, there's always somebody bigger than you. There's always somebody faster than you. There's always somebody stronger than you. There's always somebody more talented than you. That was the message. And like, hey, where is that's true? Why, why, why can't I be bigger? Why can't I be faster? Why can't I be stronger? Like there's the potential there for like, no, actually I can be that fucking guy if I put the time and work in. Like all it takes is putting the time and work in you know, so it's, um, there's a, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, getting to like, eh, you know, once I got my leg cut off, I, I've been put back in control and I've, over the years, obviously that, that was tough, man. Like, like getting like, it was just, it was starting over again. Every time you fucking build, you have to start over again when you have injuries, but that's it. It, it um, if, if I've learned something about, you know, like, um, like when you get injured, it does it does make you grow because it forces you to change. It forces you to learn. It forces you to learn patience. That's fucking huge because you can't rush your recovery. It forces you. You don't have a choice. Well, actually, you do have a choice. Some people crumble instead of instead of choosing to learn the lesson of patience. Some people fucking crumble, you know, and then they they don't do shit for two or three years or something like that. But it, if you're paying attention. An injury will teach you patience. It'll teach you how to be creative. It'll teach you how to fucking work around an injury, you know, things like that. And um, it just makes you tougher. Like all of a sudden, if, you know, if, if, if being alive is a 60 pound backpack, an injury adds 20 pounds. A severe injury adds 40 pounds. You just learn to walk. Eventually, you just learn to walk with a 120 pound backpack on you, you know? And it is what it is. And it's like, you just meet people like, oh, hey, your pack's 60 pounds, huh? That's sick. Mine's 120, but I'm doing all right. You know, like, you know, we'll manage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, like, um, over the years, like, I've, I've learned to turn, um, Fitness into paying my rent, which is like, cause it's just what I love to do. And like now my, my full time, we'll, we'll try to wrap this up here. Um, my, my full time gig is like, I'm a competitive athlete. I train to compete. I train like my, I consider my job, like I train to compete cause I love competing. And then there's things that I do to pay rent, but I fucking love working out. All right. And in, in, in and I've, I've been in the fitness world I'm 34 now. I've been working out since I was 17. So that's 17 years. I've seen it all. I've done it all. I've, I compete at high levels, but you know, like, but I'm, I'm crippled now. So it's like, you know, there's people, you know, like my name. Yeah. There's no trophies. There's no fucking magazine covers for me. Like I don't, I don't play the game. I don't play my fucking disability. Like, you know, like I don't try to get on magazine covers or like get with big companies and stuff like that. I was, I'd rather just, you know, stay in the background and, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not in the background, but like big name stuff, man. I don't like it, you know, or it's, it's fucking weird, dude. Like a lot of people that do the fuck thing. Like, it is what it is. It's Savage Saturday and I don't give a shit. A lot of people with fucking um, missing limbs and stuff, they do like really fucking average shit. It's not impressive, but a person sees somebody missing a limb. They're like, and like if, if a, a person sees somebody missing a limb and they lift fucking 20 pounds, they're like, good for you. Good for you. Good for you for not dying. Good for you for not killing yourself. Cause like, you know, like, but what, you know, that's not enough. Like, let's like, I would rather like, I just, I like, um, I've always held myself to a higher standard, I guess is the only thing to say there. Um, I don't, I'm never, I'm never satisfied with myself. There's always more you can do. It's crazy. It's crazy how if you fucking work and work and work and work and it's tough. But over the years, I'm 34 now and I'm an amputee. 
I'm better than I've ever been, but only because I put the time and effort into it. I have, you know, I don't, like I have good coaches and things like that. You know, fitness is a fucking beautiful thing, man. So, mm. anyways, <laughs> so the point of all that fucking bullshit story stuff was to tell you, like, fitness is my fucking life. Okay, like it is, it is, it is, it is my life. It has always been my life for one reason or another. That's that's what my life is. Okay, and 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 um. Fitness doesn't have to be your life, but it should be a part. I truly believe it should be a part of your life. And because you have, you're here, like wherever you think you're going after your time here on earth, that's fine with me. But while you're here on earth, you have a body, right? And like it can be healthy and fit or it can be, you know, and fitness plays a, a role in your mood and everything like that. And like, <laughs> like one of the best things I ever heard in the army was look good, feel good. It was like Sergeant Hayes. I remember that. He's like, look good, feel good, man. When you fucking when you fucking take care of yourself and you look in the mirror and you like what you see, that shit fucking goes it, it pays dividends in the rest of your life. If you just kinda like walk around and like so where fitness is is my life, it doesn't have to be your life, but it should be a part of your life because it'll make you a uh, fucking better husband or wife, it'll better make you a better father or mother, it'll make you a better suitor. You know, people will want to fuck you more <laughs> if you look better. And But, like, most importantly, it makes you feel better about yourself. Holy fuck, dude. If you fucking hate yourself, you, like, the world is a miserable place. If you fucking... And, like, even if you're fit, like, and I'm, I'm a true testament to this. Like, even if you're in good shape, if you hate yourself, the world... Like, being in shape doesn't mean you're going to like yourself. But at least you have that. Or like, and maybe you don't even think about it at the time, but, um, you know, like fitness should be a part of your life. You should give a shit about yourself. You should give a shit about your body. You should give a shit about <laughs> your health or you should give a shit. You should, you should demand more of yourself. Like humans were, were capable of such cool fucking things. And, 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 and you, uh, like it, you should want to see what you're capable of at a minimum. At a minimum, you should take care of yourself, and 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 a lot of a lot of times, fitness is just sort of like a confidence thing, you know. Like people have a hard time um, um, with, uh, but oh man, I guess all I'm thinking about in my head right now is like I think about the people who struggle. They're like, oh, but they're like the people who are like two hundred, like a fit, like a woman who's five two, two hundred fifty pounds, and she's just like she has no hope anymore but she's waiting for somebody to say you can fucking do this that's what i want like like on savage saturdays i want to talk shit but if i if i can fucking like if there's one person who listens or like even a dude like a former like a veteran he's been out for nine years and he's gained 50 pounds and he used to have all this pride but now he's just he's just fucking fat and he's nasty and he's angry at himself for being fat and nasty it's like find your fucking nuts Find your fucking nuts. Find your fucking, find that fucking voice inside your head that says you can do this. You know, fitness is nothing more. It is literally nothing more than doing the things you know you need to do. Doing the things that you're fucking, that voice in your head that tells you to be a better person, listening to that voice. And people getting their ass kicked by fucking cookies and Pop-Tarts and Pop these days and things like that. And moving forward, we're going to help you with all that stuff. Episode one was just me introducing myself, telling you my story, okay? And I probably fucking just rambled and shit like that, but that's okay, that's what I do. That's what I do, like moving forward, like you gotta introduce yourself. I fucking hate talking about myself, man. Like, I was just like, like well, it was like, you know, I was like t telling one story, but then thinking about the fucking weird things with dicks I did back in that day, I was like, oh shit, stay focused, Derek, you know? Yeah, but like moving forward, like what, like on the, like Savage Saturdays, we're fucking, we're gonna have guests, we're gonna have topics, we're gonna have, we're going to have, uh, we're, we're going to provide information and knowledge. We're going to talk a lot of shit. I'm going to talk a lot of fucking shit because that's kind of what I do. But um, my goal moving forward here on on, on, on my show, on, on, on my one day a week on the Drinking Bros podcast is um, um, just help you guys. Help you believe in yourselves. Help you with fitness. Help you navigate the fucking world of health and fitness because it's a shitty fucking world. There's a lot of dumbass snake piece of shit motherfuckers that just want to steal your money. All right, and they and they make you care about stupid fucking things. Okay, we're gonna avoid all that. 
We're going to avoid all that. We're going to laugh and we're going to drink and we're going to fucking talk shit. Um, real quick, real quickly, um, I would be remiss if I fucking uh, didn't tell you. Like, um, if, you, if you want my help right now directly, um, you can find me on Instagram. My name's Derek Wida. <laughs> it's D-E-R-E-K-W-E-I-D-A. You can find me on Facebook. It's also Derek Wida. Okay? I have a website. It's DerekWida.com. Okay? And, and, and like a month ago, for the first time, we started selling training programs. If you need, if, you, if you're looking for training programs to follow, DerekWida.com. Them motherfucking training programs are what? Like they're like 20 bucks. There's a 12-week training program for sale right now. It's 20 bucks. We released it January 1st. People are doing it. I mean, a lot of motherfuckers are doing it. And the feedback is great. You know, so I've been I've been helping with people with their fitness for about five years on the internet, and I've been doing it for free for the most part. But now I have a family. I'm like, fuck, these boys eat a lot of food. I have twin boys. Man, do you know how that's expensive? Wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool. So we have a there's a 12 week program. Um, but it but what I like is it's sharing my like I just told you. I'm 34 years old now. I've been working out when I, since I was 17, and I've, I've kind of done several different worlds of fitness. I've competed in powerlifting, CrossFit. You know, like, I could have done a bodybuilding show, but, like, who wants to stand on a stage and flex at people? Any, if that's your thing, cool, but not me, you know? Um, I, I, I've done a lot in fitness, and this is sharing what I've learned with you. Um, DerekWhite.com, there's a bunch of training programs. If, if I'll just tell you quickly right now, like there's a 12 week training program. It's a beautiful thing. Every day has a, a, a good warm up, um, a good strength session, and then a good conditioning workout. And what's cool about this conditioning is people like, I, I don't believe in cardio. As far as like a fucking stationary machine, like sometimes that shit is cool if you just, if, if your goal is to put fucking headphones on and meditate while you get warm and sweat. But as far as like fitness, fuck that. It's a fucking boring existence, man. So like the conditioning in this workout, like you're going to do some burpees. You're going to do, you're going to learn a whole bunch of new movements. It's, it's very cool. Um, a lot of the feedback already on it is, you know, um, either people are, are fat and out of shape and they're like, this is fucking like, this is amazing. But the best feedback is the people who, are, who write me, I love it. They're like, dude, I thought I was in shape. This 12-week program is kicking my ass. And it's not like the 12-week program, it's called the it's called the what? The 12-week New Year's program or something like that. It is it is not designed to fucking beat you the fuck up. It's designed to build you. But it's but it's real. You know, training is hard. <laughs> you know, like training isn't getting a fucking blowjob. Okay? Like if I could get a six pack from get my dick sucked, um, I wouldn't have a six pack because I don't get my dick sucked that often. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> training stuff and the tougher it is the better it makes you you guys should want to be tough physically and mentally that's my belief that's my belief is you should be tough physically and mentally because the world is a tough uh, the world is a the world is a challenging place but it's uh it's easier to navigate if you if you if you if you have uh, the confidence to approach it anyways I, that, that's about all I got for the like, episode one. I can't talk about myself um, much more than that. That was, um, yeah. Um, I'll just let you know, moving forward, we're going to have topics. We're going to have guests, things like that. Um, and, and we're going to have some laughs. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for joining me on episode one. This is Savage Saturdays on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm Derek Whita. I'll always say I love you. And that's my, I guess that's my message for the day. If you fucking love someone, tell them. It's okay. I love you guys. Cheers. <laughs>